So uh, with that in mind, I will I call the Pauley County Board of Commissioners February 26, 2019 work session to order. And uh, we're glad to have elected officials, uh, Sheriff Jellis here, and uh, City Councilman uh, Jim Henson here. And I left anybody out. I'm sure one of the commissioners will let me know. Brian, you'll bring the list forward and have your cell phone on and take your time to turn it off. Always delighted to have uh, Mr. Tommy Leonard with us, and he's the chaplain of the Pauline Public Appreciation Incorporation. And Tommy, uh, appreciate you bringing the uh, invitation this morning and leave us in the place. Thank you. Please stand. Thank you for the privilege of allowing me to be here. Let's pray. Father God Almighty, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you've made for us. You are the master and creator of all that is and all that will ever be. And Father, we ask that you bless today's meeting, our commissioners and staff. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to their authority. They keep watch over you as men who must give an account. Obey them so that their work will be a joy, not a burden, for that would be of no advantage to you. And Father, we give thanks to you for all of your blessings. And Lord, you have blessed us abundantly with a fresh water resource and our new reservoir that we'll enjoy soon. And soon we'll have a new detention facility. And Father, we just ask that you help remove all contention from any of these issues so that they would benefit us and help us to use them in a way that serves our citizens well. And we pray that these blessings you have bestowed upon us, bring honor and glory to you. And God, I ask that you continue to bless the 800 plus county employees that serve our citizens each day. And Lord, just let their cup overflow with your mercy and your grace. And Father, we pray that you continue to find favor in our county. And we ask that you give our leadership the wisdom to lead us in a sustainable way to ensure profit <coughs> and healthy growth in our, in our county. And Lord, let us be good stewards of all that you have graciously given to us. You are a wonderful God, and we love you, and we thank you for loving us. And it's in the name of Christ Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. so much for that beautiful prayer. The February 12th, 2019 work session minutes and the February 12th, 2019 board meeting minutes are available for your review. Under the positively pausing section today, uh, we had an unusual event the Saturday before last, and uh, I haven't seen this video, uh, but look forward to it. Thanks. Second annual polar plunge, and we're at uh, Carrington Point at Lake Swan. And it looks like we got a really good crowd this morning. And the whole reason for this event is uh, to raise money for Paulding County Special Olympics. So every dollar we raise will go directly to Special Olympic athletes in Paulding County. It's a great group and for a great call. <laughs> 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 you know, I know the chairman uh, has this program called Positively Faulty, and so events like this are just a true testament to what that uh, embodies, and so we're pretty excited that uh, we've got such a great response from the community, from the sheriff's office, from the county government, and so it's just a great opportunity to highlight some of the good things that we're doing uh, here in Baldwin County and that uh, Don Everson's doing. Uh, to help our children, especially special needs children. And so uh, this is, in my opinion, just a great opportunity to show what's positively falling. <laughs> Superintendent Brian Oaktop was there. He was smart enough to wear uh, beach shoes um, because there are a lot of sharp rocks on the bottom of it. <laughs> 
Uh, under announcements also, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting uh, for today, um, we'll, we will not have a Planning and Zoning Commission meeting today. We're having a call meeting on March the 8th at 2 o'clock. The Board of Commissioners would like to present the Paulding County Public Safety Appreciation Award to Ms. Uh, Lisa Sherling with the Paul Paulding County Sheriff's Office. So, Are you going to help with this, Sheriff Kelly? I am. I get wolfed. <laughs> she might have got told the story to get her, get her here this morning. And she's trying to figure out if she gets here while her husband's here. And he slept with some woman, and she said, Hey, that's my mama. <laughs> of course, it is what it is, and Lisa's one of these people that works very hard and, and don't look for any accolades from it, but we want to take a chance this morning to present Lisa with this award for the Public Safety Appreciation Award. She's been with the Sheriff's Office since 99. She's currently our record supervisor. In open, open. She oversees the open records, our retention schedules, along with many other tasks and projects, anything <coughs> we come up with. She's one of those that just jumps in and gets the job done. She's a leader. Most recognizably, she leads by example. She's proactive and is constantly looking out for our future. In the last 12 months, she's took on a project to help us do research and find a particular vendor as a new records management and jail management system, which is <coughs> way over my head. It's in Will's category. Oh, sorry, Will. <coughs> uh, she put together a committee and spearheaded this for the sheriff's office. Once we joined the other county public safety agency seeking a safety software solution, she remained with it in her role as sheriff, representing the sheriff's office. This is how she is and how she performs her duties daily at the sheriff's office. Please accept this as a small token for your work ethic. Work, I can't speak this morning. <laughs> work ethic, your loyalty, and your value that you bring to the sheriff's office. And also, I'd like to thank Texas Roadhouse for donating a state dinner for two. And we'll get that to you a little bit later. And if you can't get John to go, I'll go with you. <laughs> Please join me and congratulate Mr. Sheriff. here it's public safety appreciation award Ms. Lisa Shirley in recognition of outstanding service to her community presented by the Paulding County Board of Commissioners. Come on, Mike. Right. Thank you. supplementary budget that has uh, 35 million dollars designated for Pauline County Education Maintenance School and I talked with the Technical College System of Georgia this morning and um, just wanted to announce that that bill has passed the, um, the General Assembly that would be both the Senate and the House and it's on Governor Kemp's desk so look forward to some even better news uh, when it gets off his desk so very excited about that. Um, so under invited guests, we've, we've got uh, Tommy Leonard uh, and also Mr. Carrera, who uh, are very active with Keep Pauling Beautiful. And we got Ms. Megan Whitehead uh, here from um, Keep Pauling Beautiful. 
I'm sorry, keep Georgia beautiful. Uh, and so, um, you want to come up and recognize? That'd be great at this time. Hey, good morning. How cold was that water, by the way? <laughs> they said it was about 10 degrees. <laughs> uh, we're going to watch a short video. It's a recap of the 2000 year, 2018 year. 2018 was an exciting year for Keep Palm Beautiful, doing 155 projects or events with the support of a serving community of 544 volunteers with 1,263 volunteer hours. Here are a few highlights. The first big event is 21 for the Chipper. In cooperation with Keep Palm Beautiful, Palm DOT, and Home Depot, we chipped 388 trees with the mulch being distributed throughout Pauley County. Next is our Envirocape program. It is in place to reach our Pauley County third grade. Envirocape effectively communicates our shared responsibility for the environment. This program is led by our own Nancy Hightower and Erica Wilson. In 2018, we reached a total of 910 third grade students. One of our favorite events is the Shred event. We had two in 2018, one in June, one in October. These two events together kept approximately six tons of paper waste from going into the landfill. The Great American Cleanup is Super America Beautiful's biggest project. Cleaning communities all over America. In 2018, Keep Holly Beautiful had four projects total, with three being on the Silver Comet Trail and the fourth at Berkeley Creek Park. We had 51 volunteers show up to make a difference. Next is what we call the Trash Flash Mob. What is the Trash Flash Mob? This is an invention of our own. Keep Polly Beautiful has created this concept and it was written about in the May 2018 issue of Georgia Magazine. Simply put, we use social media to set up a cleanup. With a few days notice and a spot chosen, we send out a call to the community. Then we see who shows up. These usually do not last for more than an hour or two. We did 16 track flash mobs in 2018 with great results. We had 160 volunteers with 386 volunteer hours to clean up a total of 160 bags of trash. One tool we use to track Palm County cleanliness is the litter index. Each year in the month of March, the Palm County Board of Directors conducts a county-wide drive-through, assessing the condition of the main roads in Palm County. We've also begun a monthly drive-through. Take a look at www.keepalmbeautiful.org for more information. Other projects or events include monthly Keep Palm Beautiful board meetings. Rivers Alive with the UG Extension 4-H Club, Ride for Wishes, Earth Day at Georgia Islands College, and many other projects. We would like to say thank you to the Pauling County Board of Commissioners for your support, to the Keep Pauling Beautiful Board of Directors, who all are volunteers, and most of all, to the citizens who serve on these projects and events. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, those of you who don't know me, my name is Tommy Leonard. I'm actually a solid waste manager and recycling manager for Poly County. Uh, I would like to introduce the people that are responsible for Keep Poly Beautiful, and that is the board of directors. Uh, when I call your name, I would like to please come up to the front if you're, or if you're here. The officers, our president of the board, Judge Sewell, who was not able to make it today, uh, Vice President Nancy Hightower, Secretary Cliff McCready, Treasurer Erica Wilson, and included are the members Joey Collins with the City of Dallas, Mary Carol Sheffield with the UGA Extension, Bob Banks with Master Gardens, Gardeners, and also Sybil Williams. We also have a special guest with us today from Keep Georgia Beautiful Foundation. It's Miss Megan. Whitehead, she's the program coordinator for Keep Georgia Beautiful Foundation, supporting Georgia's 78 local affiliates in programming, training, and technical assistance. Prior to joining Keep Georgia Beautiful in 2015, Megan worked for the Emory University and the Lincoln, Lincoln County Chamber of Commerce, along with hotels in Asheville, North Carolina, culminating in over eight years of experience in the hospitality, tourism, and public relations. She's a Georgia native and received her Bachelor of Science in Sociology and Anthropology from Berry College in 2008 and holds an Associate of Fine Arts and Theater from Young Harris College. And Megan currently resides in Decatur, Georgia with her dog, Sully. Would you please give Megan a warm polygamy welcome. It is 
it is a great honor to be here. And as you all can see from the video this morning, the testament to this organization, Keep Quality Beautiful and the board, has done an amazing job of getting out to the community, educating, doing cleanup events, and so, so much <coughs> more. And that's the heart of the Keep Georgia Beautiful Foundation uh, and, and Keep Georgia Beautiful Network, as well as the uh, Keep America Beautiful system. And it's to, to educate and, and to change behaviors and folks so that there's lasting improvement in litter, recycling, and beautification. And so here today, we are here to honor uh, for two different awards, one from the national organization and one from the state organization. Both awards, as I said before, honor communities with its effort to protect and improve the local environment. The first award, which we will present um, later on, we don't have an award here today, is from Keep America Beautiful. The Keep America Beautiful President Circle Award is a premier designation given to affiliates who have exceeded good standing requirements in the categories of litter, recycling, and beautification. The award that we do have to present today, and as you can see from the picture, we were at the Capitol on uh, Valentine's Day to award this for our affiliates. It's the Keep Georgia Beautiful's Governor Circle Award. And this award is awarded to Paulding County, and it's presented annually by the Key Georgia Beautiful Foundation in conjunction with our annual Legislative Day at the Capitol, recognizing exemplary performance in litter reduction, waste minimization, and community greening. To qualify for the Governor Circle Award, an affiliate must be in good standing with Keep America Beautiful, the national nonprofit that oversees state and local programming. Requirements include conducting the annual litter index, which you saw in the video, calculating the affiliate's cost and benefit ratio, and engaging volunteers to take great responsibility for their community environment. And additionally, the affiliate must be active in the Georgia network with, with its membership, and that includes conferences, uh, bring one from the chipper, which you saw in the video, and just, just engagement throughout the community. So we are very, very pleased today, and again, we don't have Keep America Beautiful Award, but we do have the Georgia uh, Governor's Circle Award, and I would love to present it to the board and Ms. Nancy. Ask Robert Cabrera to come up here because everything that all the paperwork and everything to keep us in good standing and the narrative of the video again <laughs> uh, was Robert and I don't want to accept that more without him standing with us. So. and gratitude for all that you all do. Uh, it's just amazing. You know, it translates into economic development and uh, just community uh, involvement that, that unifies uh, all of us together. And we're just very, very pleased with this honor and uh, just thanks for all you do. Some may have noticed the streets are in need of it. So we're going to pick some places in each one of the posts, and we're going to actually do, you know, post one, post two, post three, post four. We're going to do a cleanup in each one of them. Uh, we also have the airport. We're going to do a, not really a cleanup, but we're going to do a project here at the airport where we're going to work around the building, put some pipe straw out. We're going to plant a butterfly garden, things like that. Uh, that's April 6th, for those of you who want to make it up. April 6th, 8.30 to uh, 12. We got on the uh, April 20th, we also have uh, a project, what's, what's the 20th? What's the 20th? I didn't write any of this down as you can see. We have, oh, that's right. We're working with Target, has approached us about doing a project, so we're going to do the Great American Cleanup at Ben Hill Strickland Park in Hiram, and that is April 20th. It's also a Saturday. 
Uh, so anyway, keep an eye on the, our uh, Facebook page and the emails, and we will get some information out to you about when all this is going to occur. We'd love it if everybody could join in. If you go to the website, keeppaulingbeautiful.org, you can sign up and get emails. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Great accomplishment. We're pleased to have our CEO of our airport here today to bring us an annual report and you know, periodic reports whenever we feel like it's necessary. Um, but Mr. Terry Tibbetts does an outstanding job with all the challenges of the airport and Jerry, we just look forward to your remarks this morning. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, before I get started, I'll, I'll add to what Robert just said. Uh, they are going to be at the airport on April 6th. They came out last year, and it was a very success, successful, successful event. We appreciate that. And we have picked that weekend because the next weekend, Shepherd's Rest is going to be having a charity fun run at the airport, and we'd like to advertise that for them as well and invite everybody to come out and participate in that. It's a very important charity in our community. Also, before I get started, I'd like for Randy and and uh, Yolanda Newell to stand up, Randy Foster and Yolanda. They represent 100% of the airport staff. And I absolutely could not do what I do without them. They are, they are a terrific help. Okay, so uh, annual reports. I've given a few of these now. Uh, they have been a challenge. Um, but I look forward to giving this one because uh, this one I think is, is all good news. Before we can talk about the vision and the future and where we're headed, I think it's important to understand where we've come from. So I'm going to take a few minutes and I'm going to talk about the past. The Pauley County Airport Authority was created by an act of the Georgia State Legislature in 1972, and the Pauley County Airport Authority is designated as a political subdivision of Georgia. That makes us a government entity. Uh, a lot of people want to think of us as uh, something other than what we are, but we are a, a legitimate uh, government entity created by the state legislature in 1972. Uh, you can look the act up online and read about what our duties and responsibilities are, how our membership is selected, all of those things. The Paulding County Airport Authority lay mostly dormant from 1972 until the turn of this century when Paulding County leadership determined that the time was right to build a public use airport, General Aviation Airport, in Paulding County. And the Paulding County Board of Commissioners at that time, jointly with the revitalized Paulding County Airport Authority, uh, began to do the planning, design, development, and construction of the first new airport to open in Paulding County, or excuse me, open in Georgia in 33 years. So this is a rare event. Airports uh, represent major investments, major uh, engineering feats, and they don't open every day. And so uh, that, that kind of created us as a, a unique entity in the state of Georgia. From the beginning, the Paulding County Airport was a joint venture between the Airport Authority and the Board of Commissioners with very strong cooperation between these two government entities. The Board of Commissioners created an airport department which oversaw uh, the FAA grant process which resulted in over $40 million dollars and federal grants from the FAA and millions more in state and local funding being made available for the development of the Paulding County Airport. We had support from the governor, from the uh, state uh, and federal congressional delegations, county officials and departments, and the various uh, state and federal agencies involved in the project. You can imagine on a project like this that uh, the involvement of EPD, uh, fish and wildlife, uh, just all of the government entities that are involved in major infrastructure and transportation projects get involved. And there was great coordination and cooperation from all of these. The Paulding County Airport opened on November 15, 2008, just as the nation was being gripped by the biggest recession and economic downturn in our lifetime. The tax revenues were dropping, Paulding County budgets were short, County employees were receiving no raises and in some cases being furloughed or laid off. In the midst of that economic downturn, county leadership turned all county department heads and challenged them to come up with good ideas that would help the county cover the shortfall. By fall of 2012, the Paulding County Airport Department, which was your department, 
and the Paulding County Airport Authority, working jointly and cooperatively together, entered into negotiations with Propeller Investments to bring commercial service to the Paulding County Airport and ultimately resulted in four contracts uh, that surrounded the expansion of the airport. In your written copy, I've uh, outlined these four contracts and the dates and the major topics covered, but these have been well discussed, so I'll skip over that section. Uh, but the three that were of most important to us, of course, were the bond payment contract, the 60-acre land lease contract, and the commercialization contract itself. The project to commercialize the airport erupted into a firestorm of political unrest and community disharmony with very strong opinions on all sides of this issue. By the election season of 2014, those opposed to the expansion of the airport had won elections that would give majority control of the Board of Commissioners um, to the commissioners openly opposed to the expansion of the airport, resulting in the outgoing commissioners at that time who did support the expansion of the airport in developing and entering into an intergovernmental agreement with the Paulding County Airport Authority dissolving the Paulding County Airport Department and effectively turning control of the Paulding County Airport over to the PCAA. This did not, however, relieve the county of its obligations under the terms of the grants from the FAA. Um, and so the county is still financially obligated to support the airport, even though today they don't have direct control, managerial control of the airport. What ensued was four long years of fighting between the airport authority and the board of commissioners over the direction that the airport would take. So how did the airport authority perform? It is the position of the Paulding County Airport that we have met every single obligation of every, each and every contract that we have signed with any and all parties. We have protected the airport asset as a safe and efficient airport in full compliance with all terms of the FAA grants in spite of great opposition from many different sources. The unpaid members of the Paulding County Airport Authority have gone above and beyond their call of service to their community and taken great abuse from those opposed to the expansion of the airport in carrying out their responsibilities to the FAA, the state, and our, our community. We owe them a great deal of thanks for a job well done uh, in this almost impossible uh, assignment that they were given. How did Silver Comet perform? Silver Comet failed to establish the $500,000 escrow account required by the bond payment contract. They made only two of the bond payments and blamed your board, um, with whom they did not have contractual agreement, as the reason for the failure of making any additional payments. They have not brought a single new business or tenant to the airport under the terms of the 60-acre land lease agreement and have blamed us, you, the City of Atlanta, Delta Airlines, and others for their failure, even though we, the Paulding County Airport Authority, during that time have attracted four new businesses, a maintenance facility, a flight school, a charter service, and an airport management company who have joined uh, the existing four businesses that were there to bring the total businesses operating at the airport today to eight, um, representing about a dozen full-time jobs. Modest, to be sure. But that success, we believe, is in the face of overwhelming odds, and I'm proud of the accomplishments that we've been able to accomplish to date. Silver Comet notified us in writing of their intention to lease one acre in Track C of the 60 acres, but never pursued that when they found out that the airport authority, in fact, did hold clear title to all property at the airport. They notified us in writing of their intention to lease 20 acres in Track A and Track B, of the 60-acre land lease, but when they found out that we were, in fact, in a position to honor that lease, we never heard any more from that again. This, this was in an effort to thwart, uh, we believe, the school uh, that's coming adjacent to that property. They apparently believed that it included the property that had been set aside for the 60 acres, and when they found out that we were prepared to hand them a lease, that went away. They notified us in writing of their intention to lease the entire terminal building by December 1, which was the deadline of their right to expand, which would have kept the contract alive. But they chose instead to serve us with a lawsuit blaming the Paulding County Airport Authority for the failure of the commercialization of the Paulding County Airport. On December 3, 2018, my board, the Paulding County Airport Authority, exercised our right to terminate the commercial lease and airport use agreement under the terms of paragraph 37 of that contract. 
Silver Comet Terminal Partners has now filed suit in federal court with various claims against the Paulding County Airport Authority, blaming us for the failure to commercialize the airport. Today, the contract to commercialize the Paulding County Airport, a contract that has divided this community for over six years and cost this community millions of dollars in litigation, <coughs> lost productivity, damages to our reputation in both the aviation community and the world of business at large, is over. All that remains now is the litigation. So what is the plan ahead? Where do we go from here? We have emerged from this experience with the confidence that the Paulding County Airport can serve our community as a vital link in our transportation infrastructure and provide a base upon which new business can be attracted to our great county. <coughs> and that by working together, the Paulding County Airport Authority and the Paulding County Board of Commissioners can lead this airport to become one of the greatest general aviation airports in the country. I'm going to go off script for just a minute and I'm going to make the following observations. The Paulding County Airport was struck by an F3 tornado, direct hit. We have suffered through three um, forest fires, floods, sinkholes, lightning strikes. We had a direct lightning strike to the top of the rotating beacon, took out most of our electronic systems there at the airport. Uh, this airport has suffered a great many adversities and we are still there today. We have survived it all and I would recommend that nobody bet against the Paulding County Airport. Uh, we're going to be around and I hope that we can work together on this great asset of this community. Our emphasis going forward is on education and training. You've already heard mention that the governor has sitting on his desk an amendment to the FY19 money. This isn't next year money, this is today's money. When he signs this contract, that money immediately becomes available to the Technical College System of Georgia to bring a $35 million asset to Chattahoochee Tech that will be placed on property on and adjacent to the Paulding County Airport. And that will give us a training facility that will provide training for new aviation um, career uh, mechanics that are going to service the aviation community in this state and this nation going forward. We are the location for the Atlanta area offering of the FAA, FAA Aviation Career Academy. Uh, we've got Mr. Ricky Flores from the FAA here today and he's going to speak after I do and tell you all about that and what it means to us in this community. Uh, we have partnered with Paulding County High School STEM program. Um, and we host their Paulding County STEM event at the airport each year. This gives our high school students, hundreds of them, come through this event each year and have a, an opportunity to have a hands-on experience with uh, employers and careers that are centered on uh, engineering, mathematics, science, technical fields, things that will be high-paying jobs for them. We're excited to participate in that every year. We have a new flight school, the Flying Tigers, which offer flight training at all levels. On May 11th, the AOPA is offering a rusty pilot training program to encourage pilots that might not have been active for a while to get back into aviation. We're now the home of Chapter 268 of the Experimental Aircraft Association, which meets every, sat every third Saturday at our airport. Uh, this is the organization dedicated to keeping the spirit of the Wright brothers alive. These guys and women actually build airplanes themselves with their hands that they then fly. Sounds crazy, but they do it and they do it safely. And I'm a proud member of that organization and I have in fact built an airplane in my past as well, which makes me crazy. <laughs> the 18,000 square foot terminal building now serves as, as what I'm calling the Paulding County Aviation Conference Center. Why do I call it that? because we've host, hosted weddings, anniversaries, birthdays, training events, off-site business events, airport tours, church events, networking events. There have been thousands, we, we estimate maybe as many as 5,000 Paulding County citizens passed through the doors of that building last year in all of these events that were held. And the vast majority of them who are first-time visitors have the same response. Wow, I didn't know all this was out here. So, uh, in a sense, to have been the centerpiece of the political firestorm for the past six years, it is amazing to me how many people don't know we're out there and don't know what it's all about. So we invite all Paulding County citizens to come get to know the airport. But the intergovernmental agreement that was signed in 2014 between the Airport Authority and the Board of Commissioners 
which assumed the commercialization of the airport would be successful and move forward, is now obsolete. The funding profile of that intergovernmental agreement decreases each year down to zero in, in the 10th year, which we're about halfway through uh, that agreement now. And the shortfall in that funding was planned to be made up from um, funding that would have been generated by commercialization. That obviously now is no longer going to happen. And today the airport is left with insufficient operating funds to survive into the future. The intergovernmental agreement needs to be replaced with a new agreement that reflects where we are today and where we want to be in the future, as well as providing adequate funding for airport operations in compliance with our obligations to the FAA. Today I ask you to take two actions. Number one, I ask you to pass a motion to authorize the Paulding County Finance Office to release our July 1, 2019 payment early in the amount of $137,500 so that we will have actu um, adequate funding to get through the remainder of this FY. This is not a budget increase, it's simply an early payment uh, of an amount uh, that is owed to the airport under the terms of the intergovernmental agreement. Then I ask you to pass a motion to authorize your county administrator to work with the airport authority to develop a draft of a new intergovernmental agreement to be presented to both boards for consideration. The goals of this new intergovernmental agreement should include the reestablishment of the Paulding County Airport Department, returning control of the airport to, to the uh, County Board of Commissioners, where, in our opinion, it belongs. Uh, there was a 1963 science fiction show called The Outer Limits. I have been living in the Outer Limits for the past three years. You may remember at the end of that show, the controller, the voice of the controller said, we now return control of your TV set to you. And I would like to be able to stand before you and say, we now return control of your airport to you. Uh, we would like to offer uh, that we would work together to develop a plan that makes sense as we go forward uh, to manage this asset. And I had a picture loaded up here, and is there anybody in here who knows how to get it up on the screen? <laughs> There it is. Okay, good. So this picture is a picture taken off of our patio deck on the night of the Super Bowl. And the reason I want to show this is you can't really tell it, but there's a series of airplanes lined up in a horseshoe shape behind here, and that line extended on behind uh, our fuel farm in the area um, of the ramp there around the terminal building. And we have a dozen airplanes here for the Super Bowl. We were the last airport in that ring of airports that were considered Metropolitan Atlanta airports um, for purposes of Super Bowl planning and bringing the Super Bowl um, traffic into Atlanta. We had a dozen. That's a lot for us. McCollum and Fulton County had a hundred. We would have liked to have had them. But let me tell you what this dozen represented. This dozen represented over a $10,000 windfall for the community, for our economic uh, community here in the form of additional fuel sales, rental cars, restaurants, um, food that was served to the flight crews who were there, um, all of the, the business that was transacted as they passed through Paulding County on their way to the Super Bowl and back, uh, some of them that night, some the next day. I also want to point out that those aircraft, I conservatively estimate, to have been valued at over $250 million, a quarter of a billion dollars worth of iron sitting on our airfield here in Paulding County at one time. That one aircraft that you're looking at uh, in the picture here as the sun's going down behind it, had that airplane been based at our airport permanently, would have resulted in over half a million dollars in taxes being generated for the county. I've talked a lot in the past about all of the revenue generated at an airport her policy from the FAA must stay at the airport, and that's true. This is uh, fuel concessions, sales tax, um, revenue from leases, and so forth. It does not, however, apply to ad valorem tax. Ad valorem tax, uh, like your car tax and your property tax you pay on your house, and taxes in Georgia that are paid on aircraft based at airports in Georgia, stays with the county. So this aircraft, if it were based in Paulding County, would put two or three hundred thousand dollars into the school budget, into the school tax revenue, um, into all of the, the revenue sources that we have. 
we have an airplane just like this that wants to come to Paulding County. In order to make that happen, we need to complete our uh, corporate hangar uh, so that we have a place that we can store that aircraft when it's fueled. Um, so we need to partner with you to make these things happen so that all of the, the positive aspects that we can benefit from this airport are realizable to this community. And with that, I'm done, and I'll, I'll be happy to entertain any questions that y'all may have for me. That romantic that takes sunset pictures <coughs> behind the airplane. <laughs> it was a lucky shot. <laughs> it's amazing what an iPhone can do. <laughs> oh. Waiting, if any commissioners have any questions, uh, I would also like to recognize Yolanda and Randy and acknowledge the outstanding work that they do out the airport on a daily basis. Represent us well. I will ask a couple questions to Terry. Sure. But first, Terry, would you please email, I, I got this uh, when I walked in, it's on, on the counter here. Would you please email me a copy of this? Happy to. Um, second question I have is uh, regarding advance payment. If you get, I know your request for an advance payment assumes um, a change in the intergovernmental agreement. Um, but if you get an advance payment, if you get July's money now, where are you going to get July? Where are you going to get money in July? That would be up to the renegotiation of the intergovernmental agreement, and would be worked out between the airport authority and your board. Let me point out that uh, where did the money go? Why are we short that money? I'll point out that the uh, conflict council that we had to hire because we were sued by your board, uh, we had to pay $144,000 to over the past three years. Uh, so roughly what we had to pay to conflict council, which was not of our own doing, um, is about the amount of that payment that we are short to get through the remainder of this year. In addition, the Paulding County Airport Authority has paid for uh, quite a bit in preparation for the school. We've paid for the engineering studies, the surveys, um, the uh, appraisals, the uh, generation of the paperwork that had to get submitted to Georgia DOT and the FAA trying to get the land released for the school. We've spent over $50,000 to date and we're not done yet. And that's not really uh, an airport responsibility, but it is something that we're doing for the aviation community uh, so that we can see this school become a reality and that's our part of the the bill that we need to pay to make that happen. And then again, the shortfall uh, is is there because we had assumed, or they had assumed, when I wasn't there when the agreement was signed in 2014, but the assumption was that commercialization was moving forward and we would have the terminal building rent and the 3% revenue share that were a part of that contract that would eventually make any funding from the county uh, unneeded, unnecessary, and that is now not going to happen. So there's a significant shortfall in the budget over this 10-year time period because of the lack of commercialization. So the situation, um, Commissioner Davis has changed. The, uh, the funding requirements to keep the airport viable have changed. Um, but again, I point out that under the terms of the grant assurances, uh, it's actually your board, not ours, who is financially responsible for the, the ongoing maintenance and operation of the airport. And we have been as good stewards as we possibly could of the funding that we had available. And quite frankly, I think have done, done remarkably well considering um, to get us to the point where we are today. But we have this shortfall and that's how we would propose that we address it. I guess the next question I would ask, could you also email me uh, this little summary? For, uh, current fiscal year so I can see that changes every day I'll, I'll send you okay, our know, know records right. as of today That'd be great. with our budget and so forth so okay. um, happy then, to do that thank you any other questions Mr. Tibbetts delighted to have you here thank you that update and, and that perspective and Tibbetts mentioned, we also have another guest who's going to uh, provide some information about ACE, the uh, Aviation Career Education Academy, and a little bit about Ricky Flores. Uh, before uh, when he's coming up here, he uh, retired from the Navy after 20 years. He was a, a Navy aviation mechanic, um, 
who's uh, retired as Chief Flores. Um, for those of you ladies that had a crush on Tom Cruise like my wife did, because she found out his politics. <laughs> uh, Maverick uh, flew F-14s, and this man is going to speak to us, worked on F-14 Tomcats. Uh, and then he went to work, he came to Georgia and moved to Pauling County in 1996. He took a job with Hawker Beechcraft, a big aviation firm and maintenance um, company. Uh, he worked there for 11 years at the Fulton County Airport and then in 2011 he got a job with the Federal Aviation Administration as a safety inspector. And last year, uh, Ricky, uh, with his vision about an aviation summer camp, uh, began talking with uh, myself and Frank and um, Terry and then some other people in the educational system, Mayor Perry, visited our airport and he told me uh, recently that he decided there's no other place he wanted to have this academy than right here in Pauline County. So Rick, we're so glad to have you here today and tell us a little bit more about what you're going to do this summer. Well, thank you. I appreciate Mr. Chairman and Commissioners for uh, allowing me to have the time uh, to speak on behalf of the FAA. Uh, as you mentioned, I've been with the Federal Aviation Administration for 11 years, uh, working in the Atlanta Flight Standards District Office, which is a federal building right on the international side of the airport. So I get the love the advantage of having to drive the Atlanta traffic every morning, coming from Pauley County. 45 minutes to get in and an hour and 10 minutes to get back. <laughs> but my, uh, my day started early and um, one of the programs that the FAA started, uh, I've been in aviation for what, going on 40 years, close to. Um, the military gave me the experience uh, and also gave me the opportunity to, um, to get out of home basically. And uh, when I joined the Navy, um, aviation was something that just spurred up when I was in high school. Uh, vocational training was, op was an opportunity in high school that I was able to, to attend in my junior and senior year, uh, which I started uh, studying as an auto mechanic. But there was nothing in aviation. I just talked to a friend uh, one morning uh, when he came in and said he joined the Navy, and so we started talking and said, well, that's not what I want to do. Um, as I started looking at uh, those programs uh, within uh, the community, uh, a lot of high schools have the STEM program uh, started. I think Alden County High School has a STEM program uh, already incorporated, and there's several high schools uh, uh, throughout the state that have the STEM that emphasize what the STEM is all about. What the FAA wants to put an emphasis on is taking those STEM elements and incorporate it into what the aviation is all about, because every one of those elements has a factor into aviation. Uh, as a career, whether it be in science, technology, engineering, mathematics, they all play a key element on putting a plane in the sky or putting a, uh, an aircraft or any vehicle in space. So an F FAA started a long time ago, several years ago, the STEM ABSET, which, which is the ABSET part, portion is aviation uh, space education. Uh, this is an emphasis that they want to say, all right, we need to really promote the aviation community and careers and what it can be uh, for students. In October of last year, October 11, 2018, the FAA came out with a memorandum that says the aviation community is facing a critical shortage, workforce shortage estimated as high as 1.2 million uh, for pilots and maintenance technicians. In the future, this shortage will have an impact on the FAA's mission to ensure safe and efficient aerospace um, aerospace system. As again, as, as probably I'll mention that, that one of the safest uh, aviation community is what the United States has. Uh, there's there's nothing that comes close to what we do. Um, the technology, the advancement, uh, the engineering, all that take uh, is a key uh, aspect in the national. <laughs> Educational Outreach Program. So that memorandum came out, and, and uh, which was just last year. It's been around for a long time. The ACE Academy. Uh, it's been little programs for three days, five days that bring a whole age group of young kids to, to talk about pilots, mechanics, just look at planes, basically. Uh, when it's been virtually unknown in the FISDO. Um, so when I was approached about it and. and we start talking about this program. This is something that's more of a volunteer program uh, within the FISDO. Um, 
it's not my primary job. As uh, Mr. Carmack mentioned, I'm an aviation safety inspector. I have my own program in the entire state of Georgia that I, I go out to, to do uh, surveillance on operators to make sure that they're doing their job right per federal aviation regulations. This is something that piqued my interest. Um, and what I looked at is that this is something I really love because I, I love education, I love training, I love aviation, and is there any way I can do that? Um, I was gonna see what I can um, participate in promoting it. So uh, one of the things that I started looking at is that I had to go through certain training, I had to get approval, and then what the FAA does is uh, allow, that sponsorship allows my time to be spent on this program. There's no funding for it. Uh, there's uh, nothing that we can generate funds to uh, for resources, materials, operators, or anything to, to carry on these events. We are relying totally on community involvement, on operators uh, dedicating their time and resources to make this program successful. Uh, the ACE Academy is just a, a stepping stone. It's a, a little camp to get kids start thinking about it. Um, so what I wanted to do is, is generate what can we do to improve it, uh, to really keep it going. So I've been living here in Pauley County since 1996. Um, I have never lived anywhere else uh, uh, since the Navy brought me here. I finished my tour of duty at Ennis, Atlanta, and I retired um, and with my wife and the family decided we like Georgia, we're staying. And um, so Pauley County was uh, something that it means dear to me to the success of the community. And um, I've done a lot of things, uh, involvement. That airport was something that I've visited quite often in the past. And uh, I said, man, this is, that's a beautiful airport. It gets underutilized. Uh, you know, I would go out routinely to airports to do ramp checks. And every time I went to Paul the County, there was nothing there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so the things have changed. And uh, then they started doing air shows. And the first air show they had in 2015, was a great event, and it really show, showcased that airport. I think they had one after that, and uh, I don't believe they had one since. So that's one of my primary jobs is to monitor air shows. So I've, I've taken kids to air shows to uh, see what, show them behind the scenes what the FAA does. So I immediately thought of Pauley County Airport, and, uh, and so I gave Terry a call, and I, I left a voicemail and said, Terry, this is basically the FAA, uh, would you give me a call back at, uh, at your convenience? I'd like to talk to you about something. Anytime anybody hears from the FAA, you ought to think, <laughs> I have to think they're in trouble about something. Because Terry's an AMP mechanic with an IA, inspector authorization. So, you know, any pilots, anyone, they always say, what would I do wrong? Say, no, 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 hold on. This is something that I think would be in your best interest. Uh, so we sat there and talked on the phone for about 30 minutes. And um, you know, I, I, I explained to the program what, uh, what we want to do. And I think what Pauley County Airport is a resource that I think could be utilized, and Terry was 100% into it. It set up a meeting uh, the following week. When I came in the meeting, I thought it was just going to be me and him. No, Terry had brought a bunch of people. Uh, Mr. Carmack and Mr. Uh, Frank Baker was there. Uh, Pauley County uh, School District and Myers Perry was represented. Uh, Yolanda was there to, uh, representing the, the staff support. Um, and then we also had a student there, uh, a work on a work program that was going to take the minutes for us. Uh, he had a room full. And uh, so that, when I immediately saw that, I knew I picked the right spot. I knew that this was something that Pauley County would be fully supported and, and fully um, behind it. So we started having meetings and we've been uh, had a meeting since uh, November of last year, and we, every month we've been having a meeting with the intention of setting up an ACE Academy. Um, as I pass out the flyers uh, for the ACE Academy, promoting this is a collaboration between the FAA and Pauley County School District. Um, it's a career path. It promotes aviation in multiple facets, facets of the aviation community. It's not just about aircraft mechanics. It's not just about pilots. One of the things I wanted to, to teach kids, and I, uh, Jerry agrees with me, that Pauley County has an opportunity to be an education, air aviation educational center. So what do we do about that? Well, you teach where aviation came from. You teach where it's now, and you teach where it's going, and you show the community everything about aviation. So I have uh, aviation military uh, history coming in. I have a Navy recruiter coming in. 
um, a Delta is going to come in, uh, commercial, any aspect of the aviation that's, that I can think of that's fully supported this program are going to come in to do the presentation to uh, keep the, the students' interest. One of the things we look, we really need now is to get the kids start thinking about it. So we're, we're really going on this first academy for the high school students, the ones who are starting to think about uh, what are they going to do when they get out of high school in the next couple of years? Uh, Paul and Kat, Mary, Barry, and Monica Rinza, I'm not sure your name right, uh, are working to get students involved in that. And then we started working about, all right, who's going to do what? Jerry worked with me to get the uh, Paulding County Airport uh, approval uh, through the uh, board, uh, airport authority approval and, and the facilities. Uh, with uh, Terry's background and, um, and our experience together, uh, this is going to go into a direction where no one really could expect. Um, as I start making calls and, and started calling operators, they're all into it. What can we do? Uh, where can we do it? And by all means, uh, the Army uh, Heritage Foundation is coming in to fly their Cobra in. Uh, the Commander of Air Force is going to fly one of the World War II planes in uh, to do presentations. Um, commercial operators, that's Delta, FedEx, uh, are going to do presentations. Um, and if you all don't know aviation as, as much as, I, as I'm learning about the state, Mr. Pat Epps um, from Epps Aviation it, himself is going to come in and do a presentation. The Epps family has been a key family in this state of Georgia for promotion of aviation. Um, when I met him and I talked to him uh, about, and I started looking at pictures on his walls, and I said, those look like some of the Wright Brothers planes. And he goes, no, my dad developed those planes. I said, really? I want those pictures. I want these pictures. Uh, anything we can do to show what aviation means and where it's going. So all that in the rest of retrospect that we started looking at, set this thing up, um, and having key speakers and one of the things we look at is that all right, a lot of students want to go to the military, and I'm fully supportive of that, but go aviation. You know, I want to see, I want to tell you what you can do aviation, because uh, I'm going to stand an example of what aviation in the military did for me. Uh, it provided me to raise my family, uh, provided me a career out of the military, and so if they want to go do that, by all means do it. Um, so the Navy recruiter to come in, that's coming in, I said, you can talk everything about aviation, and that's it. <laughs> we got all sorts of ratings, and you can't, you can't fool me, because I'm, I know all the aviation ratings in the Navy. And then as we start looking at it, we get the Air Force, the Army, uh, uh, you know, to come in and do uh, presentations, because every branch in the military has an aviation program. Um, so, that experience and that training um, leads to what we can do at Baldwin County and, and the, the formation of this school, the governor, the governor deal that started and, and now it's being approved and being routed through to get the funding is something that will greatly impact the community within Baldwin County because it keeps students here. Um, it, it keeps them training and everything else. Um, and then if, if they, once they finish their NPL uh, training and they get their certification, we're talking about jobs that uh, they can go anywhere. Um, you know, Atlanta is a huge uh, resource for jobs uh, in the aviation career. It's not just mechanics or pilots. We're talking about air traffic controllers, um, administrative. Uh, there's so many different aspects uh, that someone can pursue an aviation uh, career. It's my intention to steer them in the right direction. So with the ACE Academy, it's a stepping stone. Most academies throughout the nation are, are promoted. They do a one-week course, uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, my intention is not only doing that one-week course, but doing follow-ups, uh, mentoring, um, get some of the students who really want to pursue it and, and set them on, on a path um, and direction that they know they can follow through on and having someone to talk to. Um, being a representative of the FAA gives me a lot of uh, access to resources where I can also take students into uh, repair station facilities and do the job shadowing program, which is part of the asset program too. Uh, where they can spend a day with technicians, uh, not only in the general aviation, but on, on the commercial side, like the Deltas, uh, Delta or Southwest, or anyone who's doing major uh, repairs, and they can 
see what they really, that this is a career they want to go. Um, we're planning on 60 students, um, roughly, uh, to attend this first academy. Um, 50 of them are basically been called, come from Pauline County High Schools, and I said, well, I, I need at least 10 reserved for the FAA for outside the county. Uh, we got to be fair with everybody. And um, so there's, there's uh, the interest with Pauline County School District working with us and the sponsorships uh, that we're hoping to generate within the business communities is something that I want to make it memorable. Um, and it's not something that's just going to stop on a Friday. It's, it will continue on throughout the year. Um, we have air shows uh, throughout the year that I will pick up students um, and take them to behind the scenes. On a Friday, basically, it's all demonstration days and everything else is good, it's looked at and coordinated. Uh, and there's no crowds. Uh, so we get, uh, FAA has access to show the students, to get hands on, to look, to really get uh, close and personal with the pilots and, and to talk to them. And there's so many different uh, companies and organizations that comes in to fly and perform. Uh, my last one was in Rome, Georgia, where I took some students out and we uh, got to watch the Blue Angels. And they don't come around too often. Um, and so uh, the, the thing that we want to do is, is set up a mentorship, set up uh, sometimes so we can bring in to, to mock interviews uh, with these seniors in high schools and to, to get them on a path um, where they're just not lost. Um, and then what we'll also look at is starting to do uh, maybe one or two day, three day uh, programs for the younger students. You know, they get them to start thinking about it. It's, it's, this program is about K, kindergarten all the way to the 12th grade. Um, and even some of the students who might be even older that have completed high school, you know, I have no problem with them attending. Um, what we want to do is when they leave, they have resources in a packet and available with them um, to take them to keep, continue to think, think about uh, this program. Um, we want to instill uh, pride within themselves, uh, the, you know, in the type of dress code that they may uh, think about. How do you present yourself? Um, teaching them that, and because the, the presenters that come in in front of you are potential employers, um, they can be hiring you. Um, so how you present yourself and you learn that in an early stage is key. Um, so when we look at setting this academy up, it's Monday through Friday um, from 8:30 to 4 o'clock, uh, with different um, you know presenters coming in with either an hour to two hour presentations. Uh, we're going to feed them, um, and then you know we're looking at having T-shirts uh, made up uh, that they can wear and advertise Baldwin County. Uh, when they see that, say where'd you get that? You know that's, that's something we want to do. Um, and so, to me, to not only represent the FAA uh, and keep keeping my program going, um, I'm also representing Baldwin County. Uh, this is some of the things that they uh, we've looked at. Um, and it's, uh, it's a stepping stone. I may be steered in the right uh, other directions because uh, they're always saying, can you do this, can you do this? Uh, yeah, but Pauline County's coming first. Um, and I want to do the ACE, ACE Academy, and there's no doubt in my mind that we can make this ACE Academy the premier ACE Academy in the state of Georgia. No doubt in my mind. If we're all working together with Pauline County School District, the Airport Authority, the Board of Commissioners, and all the local communities, that just uh, is an area and an avenue to promote that airport. Um, it's just such, such a nice facility. Those airplanes that um, uh, Terry had showed about the Super Bowl, Bowl uh, I actually I thought I was going to get assigned that because their FAA inspectors were assigned to certain airports. So I got assigned to Fulton County Airport. And I've seen a lot of them uh, come in and, um, and park, and they were full. They were turning people away. They didn't know about Fulton County. Um, you know, he had 12. Uh, slots, but I'm sure you could have got more if people would have known about it. Um, so, the events with Atlanta and the growth of Atlanta, uh, with all the professional sports teams and all the events that's going on, these, these uh, um, spots the airports are going to be very limited. Um, with the school coming on board, it's just another avenue that we can train technicians, we can keep them focused on what they want to do, they don't have to go far away from their uh, home area that they live in. And hopefully during the high schools, if we can get the program started looking, they can start thinking about it while still in high school. Uh, Chattahoochee uh, Technical 
tool uh, is going to be involved with it. Um, one of the uh, A&P schools um, at Eastman, uh, Georgia's coming up to do a presentation. Uh, they have a huge program um, for pilots, technicians, air traffic controllers. Um, it's just some of the things that um, we we'll want to steer everybody in the right direction. Um, with that being said, uh, with the flyers, um, the FAA sponsorship uh, is something that I'm doing this voluntary. Uh, it wasn't assigned to me, it wasn't uh, made, uh, basically, but the FAA came out and said, look, we need to do everything we can. Um, it's just something that it's kind of taken off on me uh, and I'm spending a lot of time dealing um, and setting everything up, but I love it. Um, it's something that I, I, take, I have a passion for, and if you don't have a passion for doing anything, just don't do it. Um, with Terry's ideas and his vision of uh, Paulding County Airport, and what we could do to collaborate and make that airport grow, um, I think is endless. Um, and um, any good questions? <laughs> Sorry, I take taking so much of your time. It's hard for me to stop talking at so much time. But your, your passion is very clear. <laughs> and thank you for your presentation, Chief Forrest. And we look forward to this summer, all the kids that will be affected. Uh, anybody have any questions? Appreciate your Interested in Paulding County and, and, and interested in our airport to push that forward. I think we can be, become the uh, aviation epicenter for education around the state. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that uh, a lot of you in this room might have uh, seniors or might have students or even something we might be thinking about or sitting around the house. Believe me, I've had a few in my house that <laughs> couldn't decide what they wanted to do. Um, if they're unsure, they hold me. Um, we'll be more happy to steer in the right direction, and there's there's an opportunity for them to attend that camp. So it's open to anybody. Um, more of the flyers are they on the back? Yes. I, I that's one of the limitations that I okay. have. I don't get a color printer at, at work. <laughs> we'll take care of that. Yeah. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Rick. Under Pit Awards, number one is to award the purchase of 23 vehicles to Hardy Chevrolet in the amount of $680,235. Ms. Pollard is going to tell us about a lot of things today. We got a few vehicles to purchase today, but all of these were budgeted items originally. So in this first um, award, we have 10 of the Explorer Interceptors for the Sheriff's Office. Those um, are scheduled to be delivered in October. We also have five admin explorers for the sheriff's office, three fusions for the sheriff's office for admin. Those are all false purchases. We have um, an F-150 and another explorer for the jail. Those are, um, the explorers are usually for, they're for admin. They're funded through the JCSA, which is a uh, fine tacked on to the criminal fine paid by the inmates. Uh, or those that have gone through the court system to be utilized back into the jail program. Recreation has one explorer and recreation has one F-150. This was so large we just put it on an agenda item for the commission's approval. Hardy Chevrolet does not hold the state contracting but they have quoted these vehicles just for the state contract which is usual for them to do that every year. Hey, number two is to award the purchase of the question. Sure, you mentioned there are two of the 23 are for uh, recreation. Two of the 23 are recreation. And 21 of the 23 are for the sheriff's office. That's correct. And all of them are um, lost purchases. No. Um, the, ten, the 10 interceptors are spossed. The first 18 are spossed for the sheriff's office. And then we have three that are JCSA, so they're funded with um, jail fines. Right. And then the recreation are general fund. And the general fund are budgeted. Those general fund are budgeted. Okay, thank you for the clarification. Number two is to award the purchase of one flatbed truck to Peach State Truck Centers in the amount of $89,685. This is a DOT purchase, and we are recommending award based on the state contract pricing from Peach State Truck Centers. Any questions on that one? Number three is to award the purchase of a T-77, T-4 Bobcat, E-55 combat, 
compact track loader to the lowest bidder bobcat in, of Atlanta in the amount of $7,339. Our fleet manager, we did go out to bid for this one. He received four, four um, quotes back for this equipment and recommends an award to the lowest bidder of all. Any questions? Number four is to award the purchase of two Chevrolet Tahoes to Hardy Chevrolet in the amount of $73,068. Hardy Chevrolet does hold the state contract for uh, Tahoes, and one of these Tahoes is to be used for a canine unit and the other one's for transport. One's funded with SWAS and the other one's funded with um, JCSA. Questions? Number five is to award the purchase of two tandem dump trucks in the amount of $263,472. Again, this one's a DOT purchase and this is uh, being purchased off the state contract. Any questions? Are there any representatives from Hardy uh, in the audience? Just going to thank them for their um, assistance in improving our fleet. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, we have Sheriff Gulledge uh, to come back up and give us an update on what's going on in the SO. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning, Thank y'all for allowing me to do this. I want to give y'all the year end numbers. I put a pamphlet out on each one of you saying that Chuck Hart used to be a fireman, so we had to add some pictures to it for him to tell us what was going on. And he's not even here to be a pickup today. So uh, I want to make it real brief. I know y'all been busy, heard a lot this morning, so I'm going to give you the numbers for 2018 for the Sheriff's Office. Uh, we patrolled 2,966,711 miles, totally arrested. Arrested individuals for 3,484. We've issued 3,012 traffic citations. We handled 62,885 complaints. Uh, the high volume calls for the year was uh, 5,572 alarms, 2,748 domestic disputes, uh, 1,779 lockouts. We had 4,384 subpoenas and civil papers that our guys served. Uh, 5,240 of these calls were suspicious incidents, either persons or vehicles. We had 2,645 felt potatoes, burglaries, and entering autos. Uh, just so I put in my pad, there's still a rash of entering autos going on. If you have belongings in your vehicle, please remove them at night and lock your doors. It helps us a lot. If you're going through neighborhoods and just take the door locks, if the door opens, they go through the car. If it's locked, most of the time, as soon as I say this, I'm going to get your window broken. Most of the time, they'll go on to the next car or they don't make any noise. So remove your valuables or secure your vehicle. A, there's a thing on the side of most of the houses that the big door opens and you can actually pull in it. Unless you're like my wife, you pack it full of three dollars worth of junk that you can't get a fifty five dollar car in. So you know, get that clean out your garage and park your car inside. Uh, our guys perform uh, seven thousand hundred six that keep talking again, seven thousand seven hundred and forty five traffic stops. We arrested eighty three DUIs. We cleared up four four thousand one hundred and eighty six warrants. That we did 1,094 zone patrols. We had 1,592 juvenile incident reports. 447 of those was assigned to 577 charges. Uh, the detention center, of course, stays extremely busy. In 2018, we brought in 3,913 inmates with a daily average population of about 236. Uh, our transport unit, which the town was talking about buying tiles, we transport uh, prisoners back and forth all over the state. Uh, they did 7,633 transports to court, prison pickups, and 44 of these was the mental health, which is people's 1013 that we have to carry, the state law is we have to carry on for mental health. Uh, the inmate workforce is another thing that's near and dear to my heart is the people make this county look like it's a trash dump and it's not, it's my home and I love it. Quit throwing trash out your windows. Uh, our inmate detail, and we don't have enough that we can stay on it all the time, but we picked up 487 bags of garbage and picked up 100, 115 mile, total miles of roadways in Pauley County. Fast as I talk, I get you done. I'd like to ask you about um, cell phone use. How many stops, or is that a problem? Uh, I would have to talk to the guys. I, I stay on the different side of it, so I don't really hear a lot of that. About the workforce, uh, we, 
I know uh, Sergeant Henson uh, provides uh, information about new hires. Are we losing personnel? Always. We got two more letters this week. People leaving. It's uh, for lack of a better word, the media is put a, a dent in, into our profession, and it's hard to get people in, interested in this line of work anymore. And uh, not to poke anybody in the eye, but our retirement benefits are not where they should be, and we can't keep them retained or hire good people. We're basically hiring young men and women to train them and watch them go to other agencies and pay more of their retirement benefits. It's uh, something we got to work on. And it's going to require all y'all to help me do that. I don't have to. Got to have y'all to do it. So. Budget time is here. Yes, sir. I know. Any other questions? What about the sex traffic? Rotary Club is a big thing we're moving into. I think it's becoming a big thing in, in, the, in the whole country. Uh, we've got two people that they're closely monitoring that, and I know I wouldn't say anything before, but just like the planes at the airport, we actually had guys out there watching what was going on with people coming and going with these planes. So that's, a, that's a great way to do it without would not be seen. So we actually had people at our airport keeping out planes like this. It's, uh, yeah. It's like the drug problem in the country. It's, it's, it's not going to go away. But it, it breaks my heart to even think about it. But I mean, it's here, it's everywhere. Anyone else? Sheriff sure, Jones, we appreciate you. Thanks for all y'all do. Thank y'all for your time, sir. Happy day. Under public participation on agenda items, we have no one who has signed up on the consent agenda. We have four items, and you have to bear with me. This is required. Number one is to appoint Bobby Brief to the, cem the Cemetery Commission for a term ending February 26, 2020. Number two is to appoint Commissioner Sandy Caker to the uh, Public County Board of Health. Number three is uh, to declare items listed as surplus and approved their disposal through auction or trade. The Sheriff's Department is has uh, car unit 52 in 1998 Ford 2FA. Back up, we have to read on this. Okay, I heard it. Uh, 1998 Ford um, serial number 2FA FD 71W1WX125722. It's a crown. That's the crown deck. Okay. And. Um, also, the sheriff is car unit S 177 1998 42 FAFP 71 W2 WX 134669 Crown Vic. And so the sheriff's car unit S 102 2005 42 FAFP 71 W 65 X 147578 Crown Vic. And Last of the sheriffs is car unit P-7, 2008 Ford Crown Vic, which is 2FA FP-71B, 48X170003. With the tax commissioner is a truck unit 368, a 1999 Ford Ranger, 1FT YR10C, 8XPA 74955 and with the tax assessor car unit 364 which is the 2004 focus 1FA FB 36P 7YW204806 and number four item on the agenda is amend the 2019 planning commission schedule by adding a meeting on March the 8th 2019 any of the commissioners like to place any of these items in regular business? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to place um, number two in regular business. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Caker will place the number two in regular business. Old business, we have none. New business number one is discuss action authorized the chairman to enter into a supplemental contract with Trans Systems Incorporated in the amount of $109,639.52 for engineering design service for the Swan Drive drainage project. Mr. Jones. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, before I start off, um, I'd like to announce that we do have a round of uh, 
litter pickup on county highways starting next week. So 521 miles. I know there's a couple of comments earlier today about litter on highways. So uh, loving contracting our contractor to be working on that. Um, I think I provided you the lengthiest backup memo I've ever written on the particular agenda items. I will keep it short, but we'll share it hopefully shorter. Um, again, this is for engineering of aluminum arch culverts for two locations on Swan Drive, located in Post 3. Um, we had previously performed engineering studies for freestanding bridges at these locations. However, when we bid these projects out for construction, the construction cost was over $2 million, which was 61% um, higher than our internal estimates. So uh, at that point, we stepped back and tried to figure out ways to make these projects uh, more financially viable. Um, we looked at uh, reducing the costs by changing from bridges to aluminum arch culverts and also um, building the culverts on the existing alignment. Um, at this time, I asked the consultant to come up with a construction cost estimate, and they're looking at around $800,000, $850,000. So um, if all this goes through, we will save over a million dollars on construction costs. The design time for this work is um, five months, and I can hopefully answer any questions that you may have on this. No questions? Thank you very much, Mr. Jones. New business number two is discuss action uh, by the Board of Commissioners to initiate an application to amend the official zoning map to rezone approximately. 66 acres from B2, which is Highway Business District, and PRD, Plan Residential District, to B2, Highway Business District, for commercial retail service office land uses. Ms. Whitman. Um, thank you, and good morning, Commissioners. Um, okay. I'm several of you are new, but if you may recall, last August, um, the Board of Commissioners voted to um, prohibit acceptance of any rezoning applications to the PRD Plan Residential Development Zoning District. Um, in that ordinance, we included provisions that any conforming property would be considered vested, and the two categories we considered for vesting was that they have a minimum of 50 contiguous acres and be under single ownership and a unified control until development. Planning and zoning staff since August have been looking over all the properties on PRD, and we have identified several that we would like to initiate rezonings. The um, zoning ordinance allows either the planning commission or the board of commissioners, in addition to property owners, to initiate rezonings. And the first piece of property we have identified is this case. It was case 2007-17Z, as well as case 2008-6-7. The initial case rezoned 77.949 acres to PRD and BC. <coughs> um, the subsequent rezoning left a remainder of 35.54 acres on PRD, which does not meet the 50 acre minimum requirement. Um, we have contacted the property owners. They are agreeable to this rezoning, and um, this property is the potential future Costco site. Um, and this rezoning would put the entire tract in commercial zoning and would allow staff to revisit the zoning stipulations that were placed at both times of the rezoning. So um, this would be the reason for the call meeting in March, which we have identified that we have the form of our planning commissioners, and we would just ask that the board of commissioners initiate this rezoning. How many property owners are involved there? Um, at the current time, one. So you and your staffs work on this and you make that change. Very important transaction we're looking forward to. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Lemon. New business item number three is what we just added from the consent agenda, which is to appoint Commissioner Sandy Caker to the Pauline County Board of Health. You want to describe that, Jason, and why we need to do that? Yes, sir. I believe that. Uh, Commissioner Caker, just she's the she's the uh, proposed appointee, and um, when you put something on a consent agenda, you it's there because you pretty much know in advance that all commissioners agree to the proposed action. Uh, in Commissioner Caker's situation, I believe she's presumably going to abstain from the vote in favor of her, so this will give her the opportunity to do that. 
can't vote for yourself. She could vote against herself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, late announcement. Uh, those of you who've been around Paulding County for a while, I see some of the audience. Uh, Flight 242 uh, continues to uh, have fundraisers in progress. And uh, a week from Saturday on the 9th of March is going to be a uh, dinner, a uh, very fancy and nice dinner uh, at the airport. Um, if you or a friend or a spouse want to attend that, uh, I can certainly get that set up for you. Uh, that accident killed more people than any other accident uh, in the history of Georgia. Um, so. A monument for that. The uh, location of that monument is already owned by the county, but uh, there, there's a whole committee, I'm not on it, but there's a whole committee that uh, are putting on this dinner for March the 9th. Uh, next and last announcement is that our operations manager is one year older today. <laughs> and uh, I think it's 39 for the 10th year. <laughs> Happy birthday, Scott. Happy That's birthday. That's the conclusion of our regular business, so we have no need for executive session today. <clears throat> so I won't get us on the back room. <laughs> You'll bring lunch. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you everyone for being here. I'll make the motion to adjourn. The motion by Chris today is for second. 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 Over 81 yards. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.